Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm back today for another tutorial for you guys. And today's tutorial is going to focus on a couple different subjects instead of just one. Just because so much happened over this past weekend that I wanted to address, so here we are. Today's look is going to be created solely using the Naked 2 Urban Decay Basics palette as far as the eyeshadows, obviously. But anyways, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already. Leave any comments, questions, or requests down below as always. And I hope you guys enjoy. Later! Alrighty guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is obviously moisturize my skin. I honestly considered doing a retry of these elixir foundations from CoverGirl, but after yesterday's episode, I don't think I want to put that stuff anywhere near my face. even more worried was the fact that you guys saw at the end of yesterday's video that there was a skin reaction that I had from that foundation. I have no idea where it came from. The only new thing that I tried on my face was that foundation. Everything else I've used before many, many times, and I've never had a negative reaction, so that could have been the only thing that would have made me break out like that. Like, it was really, really bad. Alright, so for primer today, I'm gonna be using the Rimmel London Lasting Finish Primer. I'm gonna place this where I have the most problems as far as pores. Alright, so as for the tea, we are going to discuss a few different topics because I've gotten requests for a bunch of different things to talk about here in my tutorials. So over the weekend, a lot has happened. We saw the whole X Sparkage with Evie Blender Cosmetics, whatever the fucking brand is. They had some drama going down. But the biggest topic that I've been requested to talk about was the 11th Gorgeous like Wet n Wild haul thing they did. If you have no idea, this is what I'm talking about. All right, we've got a crap ton of some Wet n Wild stuff. Well, some of it's got unicorns on it, but some of it I think is re-promote like the rainbow highlighter I think yeah. came out before. Oh. Yeah. All right, this one is Everlasting Glow. It's like a pinky kind of color. Bronze over the rainbow. Pigments. There are three pigments. Pegasus Flutter. This is Mythical Dreams. Unicorn Wishes. Okay, we have this Unicorn Glow Highlighting Brush. Iridescent color. All right, guys, that concludes our mishmash of things that we got at the drugstore. Yeah. So I'm using this Rimmel foundation for the first time, and clearly I got the completely wrong shade. Or did I? I mean, I don't know. It looks so weird. I got some of my brows. That's awesome. So the big drama that happened over the weekend was that 11th Gorgeous hauled the new Wet n Wild Unicorn Collection. If you follow Wet n Wild on Facebook, Twitter, anywhere pretty much, you would have known that these ladies were lying because the collection isn't even released yet. Ooh, this is so cakey. I'm gonna try to work with it because I don't want to like start all over again, even though I'm in the beginning stages of my look, but still. But it just looks so weird, does it not? Like, look how it looks on my face. It looks cakey, doesn't it? Damn, so all these foundations are going back because this looks... Like, look at it. I'll be right back. I'm taking this shit off my face. So I know now to never use a Rimmel foundation or a CoverGirl foundation because they're obviously going to be way too orange for my skin. Never again. You learn your lesson. You move on. We're going to go in with the Bare Minerals Primetime Foundation Primer. I love this primer when I'm not using my Clinique Super Primer. Anyways, let's get back to the tea, shall we? Now, what made me laugh so hard at this video was the fact that these girls clearly have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. They bullshit a lot of their reviews, you can tell. They clearly had no knowledge of the product they were talking about because the collection, the unicorn collection from Wet n Wild, is being sold exclusively first at BeautyCon, and then they're going to release it to the public on the Wet n Wild website, and I'm pretty sure Ulta as well, but don't quote me on that one. And it doesn't go on sale until like two days after it releases at BeautyCon. I watched the video, and I was like, girl, why the fuck are you lying? And maybe it was an honest mistake. If it was, then learn from it and move on, but there have been so many times where these girls have falsely put out information about a product. That was one of the main reasons why I stopped watching their channel and unsubscribed is because they're fucking annoying, they're uneducated about the products they're talking about, and it's very obvious they don't give a fuck anymore because if they did give a fuck, they would have taken the five minutes it would have taken to go on the Wet n Wild website or wherever Wet n Wild posts about their new products, and you could find ad after ad after ad that Wet n Wild has released for the past few weeks about this collection being released, where it's gonna be released, when it's gonna be released, how much it costs, like the information's there, just go look for it. So yeah, anyways, that was the drama with 11th Gorgeous and needless to say people have been watching and they've seen that video and people are not happy about it. If I were the PR rep at Wet n Wild I would have made them pull that video immediately. Alright so the next thing we're gonna talk about is this whole drama concerning Evolution Cosmetics or EV Blender. I don't know what the fucking cosmetic brand is called versus X Sparkage here on YouTube. Over the weekend some major drama happened
happened between those two. And it all started when X Sparkage released a review video on the Eevee Blender. I'm using my Naked 2 Basics little palette here from Urban Decay for today's look, I think. So the first thing I'm doing is taking this first shade in the shade Skimp, and I'm applying that all over both of my lids. I know why you're all here. This weekend has been just a, there's no other word for it. It's been a shit show. And I also want to have this for brands, smaller brands, big, any brands, as a kind of a tale of caution. Like, this is not the way to go about dealing with influencers. On Thursday, I uploaded a video reviewing or a first impression of the Eevee Blender, which is a new silicone sponge to apply your makeup with. I didn't like it. I really didn't like the way that it felt. I was sticky. There was just a lot of issues with it that me personally, I didn't like. I still made sure that it was telling the truth. That's how I felt about it. After I posted this video, I noticed that I had gotten a comment from the Eevee Blender YouTube page. In this comment, they mentioned that they saw my video and they would love to give a demo on how to properly use the blender. And now I'm going to go into shade Frisk, which is right here. I'm going to blend that into the outside corner and the crease. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> this brand is obviously run by a woman who is very, very sensitive about people talking shit about her product, which I get it. But if you are a new brand on the scene, the last thing you want to do is create drama like this because now no one wants to use your product because it obviously sucks but now no one wants to give your products a try anyways because of how unprofessional you look you know what i mean and now we're going to take a shade cover which is right here we're going right up the line and i'm going to keep that really tight into that crease to add depth so X Sparkage was nice enough to give the product another try in a second video because she obviously used the product wrong according to the brand owner who was very very rude to her might I add. And even still, even when she used it the proper way, it still did nothing for her. It still looked like shit when it was done. Now what was funny was that after that first video by X Sparkage was released, the brand owner was in her car and filmed three separate videos I think it was. They'll all be right here. I read this comment and I decided that I was going to film a take two. I was going to film another video where I watched the videos on their channels and applied the foundation, used the blender the way that they recommend to do it. So as I was editing and getting ready to upload and post my second video, I had gone onto Instagram and gone onto Evie Blender's Instagram page. And while it was there, I saw that they had a couple of videos from the CEO. There were four videos in total that were a Q&A on how to use the Evie Blender correctly. It's time that I gave a EV blender tutorial to some unnamed, who I'm not going to get into that drama, uh, unnamed bloggers. You're the ones that reviewed the EV blender and used it incorrectly on purpose to be clickbait basically so that you could get more views. You know that it looked funny when you were doing this, but um, you're your purpose is to educate your subscribers and um, that's not very educational. So how about we do it correctly? So this is the right way to use it. You swipe and then you either bounce lightly because there's no reason to press hard because I'll tell you why. The reason why I have a patent pending on the texture in this design here is because the reason it blends is the texture. It's really that special. So you don't need to pound your face like you do a sponge. Um, it's apples and oranges. You wouldn't use a brush the way that you use a sponge. You wouldn't eat an orange and expect it to taste like an apple. They're two completely different things. This doesn't absorb and it's made out of silicone and nothing like this has ever existed before. Oh wait, okay. You guys are gonna say, oh, it's like the Scylla sponge. Actually, it's not. The Scylla sponge and um, all of the things that look like a Scylla sponge, they're actually silicone gel that is inside of a vinyl wrapping or a plastic wrapping. This is actually 100% pure solid silicone that is platinum grade um, and hypoallergenic. I am I'm learning and you're learning and I think it's awesome, but if you're ever curious or, or questioning like how to use this correctly or what this is, because it's like a bicycle. If you've never seen a bike before and somebody tells you, hey, you know, this is how you ride it, 
The first couple times you ride it, you're probably not going to enjoy it. It's going to be awkward and weird and you're going to fall off probably. But after a couple of times, you're going to get it and you're going to love it. And then you remember how to do it for the rest of your life and it seems really simple. I am somebody who absolutely adores content creators who are downright bluntly honest about how bad or how good a product is. x Sparkage was more than fair to this product and gave it not one, but two tries to ensure the product was actually worth her time, which it, in the end was not. The fact that she made the extra effort to make another video to try to correct her wrongdoings in the first video, I mean, to me, that showed me how real that girl was. So for this brand to react the way it did was just uncalled for. After everything, the brand tried to lie and say that they never sent a cease and desist to x Sparkage for her video, even though homegirl had her receipts ready, locked, and loaded to be released at the right moment, and she did release release them on Twitter. And then out of nowhere in the middle of the night, the brand went on and made a public apology, not a personalized apology to x Sparkage, which I think was really shitty. They were threatening her for giving the product a negative review, saying that she was very unprofessional, saying that she was making very, very liable accusations, which I don't understand because she never accused them of anything they didn't do. As for what the brand owner said about x Sparkage, that she said wasn't about x Sparkage, but you could tell that it was about x Sparkage, it's not about using the product the wrong way. I mean, hell, we watched Nikki tutorials do the same exact application process and even she said that it was like applying makeup with a fucking dildo. So I picked some, I picked a lot of foundation up and we're gonna swipe it in first. Oh my god I'm so nervous. That's a lot. Can we evenly distribute the, oh no we cannot. That's kind of harsh. Tapping it into the skin it kind of, it's a little harsh on the skin it's like literally feels like you're slapping your face with a dildo. It but that brand didn't say shit to Nikki Tutorials, though. What made it even funny, speaking of Nikki, was the fact that the brand said in that initial comment about x Sparkage on her video about their product that people might confuse her as a beauty expert, but a beauty expert used your product and still had a hard time using it. So maybe it's not the person who are reviewing it. Maybe it's your product being shit. What do I think about the Eevee blender? I... I'm not a fan. I, it was, it was, it was not a fun experience for me. Like, I'm so sorry. And then to finish this whole video off, I wanted to address a few more things from that whole Kendall Ray video we just put up a couple days ago. It's not just YouTube's fault. I think YouTubers need to be realistic about whose fault this really is because it's multiple people's fault. First of all, YouTube sucks at communication. So I can definitely agree with you on that point. YouTube is very, very bad at communication with their creators, but I need you to just step out of your little bubble that you're already in and realize that you're not the only one who is affected by this whole ad boycott bullshit. You seem like someone with a serious case of the me, me, me's. And what I mean by that is it's all about you and what you're going through. It doesn't matter what anyone else is going through. It doesn't matter if it's all the same shit that you're going through. It's all about you and getting things done when you want it done, when you need it done. And I have to tell you, you're going to have a very rude awakening. YouTube is not trying to focus and hone in on specific channels to fix first. There's no specific order. I'm fairly certain they're trying to fix this ad boycott and get everything settled again for everybody across the board, regardless of whether or not you are a drama channel, a beauty channel, a gaming channel, whatever genre you may be, they're trying to fix this across the board for everybody so everyone can get paid again and not have to deal with this kind of bullshit. So I think you need to realize that you are not the only one going through this. Everyone is feeling it in some way, shape, or form. And we need to stop blaming this on YouTube solely because what it does come down to is the fact that it comes down to the creators of the videos. And then it's also content creators that are putting out garbage. And I'm sorry I have to say it because it is the most frustrating thing when I'm really trying to put out good quality content and be what YouTube was originally supposed to be, a place for creators to express themselves and and share something with the world and then there's youtubers that are just exploiting it for money now listen what are you doing right now to your channel you're using it for money right so I don't know what makes you think that you're so different from anybody else doing the same shit so yeah I mean you have no point there Continue. These drama channels, like I made a whole video about drama channels and how they're ruining YouTube because advertisers don't want to advertise on videos of people talking 
about other people. Now here's the thing about these drama channels. There are a select few that are, yes, garbage. I agree with you on that. The channels who create drama out of literally nothing. I've addressed this here on my channel before in a past video. Karina Kaboom, Rich Lux is starting to get into this shit now, John Cookie and Sanders Kennedy, all bullshit to me, don't trust any of them. If you have to go and create drama in order to have content, like that to me is bullshit. Like I pointed out in my last video about the drama channels or the garbage drama channels, why does it matter what Manny MUA does with a consenting adult behind closed doors? Like why does it matter that he likes gay sex, you know what I mean? But here we have Rich Lux who's making a video about Manny MUA's gay sex addiction. Like I said in that video, listen, if I was getting the dick and it was that good, I'd be fucking obsessed with it too. I'm pretty sure anybody would be obsessed with a good dick, you know what I mean? Like it's not a big deal. Rich Lux made a whole video about it and made it into a huge deal and made Manny out to be this like terrible person for liking good sex. Well because I like like good sex and clearly I'm a bad person too. It's shit like that that I don't understand and to me that is what makes these drama channels garbage is when they literally take nothing and make it into a huge dramatic situation that it doesn't really need to be. Now on the other hand I appreciate the drama channels who actually bring forth shit that should be exposed that should be talked about. If a brand is doing something shitty or shady absolutely call that shit out it should be exposed. If an influencer is doing something shady or shitty Absolutely, that shit should be exposed. It's not drama if you're making people aware of something that should be brought to the light. That is the shit that we should have more of. We should have more honest, truthful videos about these brands that we work with, show on our channel every single day. EV Blender being unprofessional, Lime Crime being unprofessional, Z Palette, Gerard Cosmetics, like all these brands who do shady things, they should be called out. It's not being trashy and it's not bringing out garbage. It is bringing light to a situation that we should be aware about, especially as the consumers who go out and spend our, our hard-earned cash on the products from these brands who probably don't give a fuck about us, you know what I mean? So I personally can't agree wholly with your statement. I think there are some drama channels who really do a very good job of bringing these relevant situations to the light in a very professional manner. That is the type of toxic sh all of that stuff that YouTube does not want on their platform and advertisers do not want to advertise on it. So why is this affecting me? I think the advertisers are being greedy. Um, um, they're not understanding that they're affecting that their boycott is literally ruining people's careers girl <laughs> The same way you say these brands don't want to advertise their products on videos about people who are talking shit about somebody else, maybe those same brands just don't want to advertise their products on videos that are about conspiracy theories. Maybe they don't want to advertise on videos made by people who are exploiting these terrible murder stories about these kids being murdered. Like who murdered JonBenet Ramsey? Who murdered this person? Who murdered that person? Where is this person? Where is that person? Like I understand why they probably don't want to advertise on your shit because all you're doing is using these terrible stories, repeating them, and then throwing in these ridiculous assumptions on your behalf about what could have happened. If you are suffering that badly financially, then you have no business promising extra entries into giveaways that you obviously can't afford right now. That was another thing that I realized. Her tears are ridiculous. To promise your subscribers extra entries into these ridiculous giveaways when you can't afford a giveaway, so they're not going to get a giveaway for like months and months and months depending on how soon you get money, obviously, and it only works out for them benefits them if they actually win the giveaway you know what I mean but like in the end they still get screwed over out of money all the while you're still getting their money each month and you're living free and doing good to me that's bullshit you are scamming these people it makes you look dumb I apologize if that offends you but honestly I don't really give a fuck I'm just calling you out for doing dumb shit your subscribers deserve better than what you're giving them like nothing in your tears will benefit them unless they actually win a giveaway or unless they actually really really are obsessed with you and give a fuck about whether or not you follow them on Twitter, which to me is ridiculous. $50 for a fucking Twitter follow? <laughs> Come on! To me, you're a fake as fuck person because when you were saying those nice things to your subscribers to make them feel good about themselves or to make them smile, you obviously didn't mean it and you obviously saw it as some sort of like pawn to use against them in the future, which you're doing right now. You're using that one time you were nice as fuck to them and said nice things to them to make them feel better about themselves to your benefit, to your advantage. Make them feel guilty about not donating to you and to me, that's trashy, you're fake as fuck. And if I were one of your subscribers, I would honestly unsubscribe 
so quickly. If you honestly do not believe in what you're saying, just keep your mouth shut. Especially when it comes to making someone else feel good about themselves. Like, why would you use that against that person when they already feel terrible about themselves? All you did just now was make yourself look like a fucking asshole because, like I said, you're using that one good deed you did for them against them to get money from them. Like, that's trashy to me. So, you don't need a fat check written out for you for money. What you need is a fucking reality check. That's all I'm gonna say, guys. I'm gonna get off here. I have some more videos to film for the day, but if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys so, so much. Bye.